Hello friends, this is James. I'm sitting on board sailing vessel Tritea in Coches Pretos Anchorage on the Channel Islands. And this is a Stern View podcast. Let's start with a little bit about me and about the podcast. Um, this is my first podcast ever, uh, so bear with me. I'm sure we'll I'll find a, a comfortable what works and what doesn't work. I listen to quite a few sailing podcasts, and uh, I feel like there's definitely not enough out there for all of us who are obsessed with sailing. There's not enough content, maybe. And I feel like... Uh, Andy Shell has the lock on sailing interviews. Um, the On the Wind podcast is incredible. The Sailing Stories podcast is incredible. So um, I, I, it took me a minute to figure out what kind of sailing podcast made sense for me to do. So um, I decided to do something of like a cruiser's guide um, for anchorages. So this, a Stern's view... Um, is going to be recorded at anchorages and uh, each episode will be specifically about one anchorage. A little bit about me. I started doing pretty extensive sailing in 2014 uh, when I did spent 21 days on board a um, sailboat sailing all the Orkney Isles in northern Scotland down to Stromness and uh, through Pentland Firth and uh, down the North Sea into the Caledonian Canal and across the Caledonian Canal. After that, I was hooked. It changed the trajectory of my life, and I decided all I wanted to do was sail and uh, circumnavigate. So that's kind of when things started in motion for me of like figuring out how to make that happen. Um, in 2015, I crewed on a yacht delivery from San Diego, California. To San Francisco, California, uh, on board the Intrepid, a 36-foot Islander that had previously circumnavigated. At the helm was uh, Zach Sutherland when that circumnavigation happened. Uh, my friend, uh, my friend now, um, Tim was the captain of it when I was on board. Then, in uh, 2016, I crewed on a yacht delivery that was supposed to go from. Uh, Puerto Rico to North Carolina, the Outer Banks, uh, but we were five days at sea and a storm out of the Chesapeake forced us to run for Bermuda. So we ran for Bermuda, spent a day or two in Bermuda, and then headed out to the Outer Banks. And that was on a, uh, I think it was a 42-foot do four. So yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've had some big passages uh, in the last couple of years. But last night, was the uh, yesterday and last night was the first time I've done a big solo passage, and um, it was seventy something miles from uh, Angel's Gate Lighthouse, which is near to my marina where my boat's tied up, to um, here Coches Pretos Anchorage in the Channel Islands. Sailing vessel Tritea, which some of you will know from my YouTube channel, um, there'll be links to all that in the show notes, is a 1965 Alberg 30 I've been refitting. She was uh, in a state when I bought her, and uh, I've spent the last six months like going crazy refitting her. Put a Pulled the old engine out, put a, a beautifully rebuilt Yanmar 2GM20 in, 2, 2GM20F. I... Um, did a million other things so far, and the, but there's many more to do. But um, you can see all that on my YouTube channel if you're interested. And the other thing is all of these A Stern View podcasts will be published at the same time as uh, a corresponding video. So, you know, if you listen to this and you want to, you're, you're like dying to, to see what the Anchorage looks like or a video of the Anchorage or whatever, um, there'll be episodes that you can go check out. Um, on my YouTube channel. So, let's get into the uh, Anchorage. 
the, um, this is, uh, I'm going to read from Brian Fagan's book, Cruising Guide to Southern California's Offshore Islands. This book was my Bible for this whole trip. And, oh, I should say, uh, this, uh, I, this trip is going to be, I have to sell back on December 31st, so, um, it's something like nine days, um, that I'll be gone total. Um, I'm going to hit as many anchorages as I can. I'm not great at relaxing and sitting still, so I'm going to, you know, explore an area and move on to explore more. So, anyway, back to this book. So, Cruising Guide to Southern California's Offshore Islands unbelievable book like so extensive photos and stuff like uh which is really helpful because when i was coming in yesterday i mean i i have paper charts and i have my digital charts and uh you know and i, I could see you know and i was on my compass course and everything but trying to identify it visually he has photos of many of the anchorages with arrows to shows you you know and it, it tells you the best place to uh to drop your hook and everything it tells you what to expect it's so extensive, a, a huge resource if you're coming out this way. You have to get this book. So let me read you the passage for this anchorage. And uh, when I was coming in, I kept looking at Blue Bank's anchorage, thinking that that was it. And uh, it turned out to be that um, I couldn't, you can't see it when you're coming from the, the, uh, the direction I was coming from. So, Coches Pretos, I may be saying that wrong, but... You know, what are you going to do? It says, general description, a charming cove, Coches Preto means black pig, probably the best anchorage on the south side of Santa Cruz Island. Coches Pretos has fine sandy beach, good shelter from the west and north winds, offers some protection in Santa Ana conditions. Alberts is the best in strong northwest winds, however, this beautiful spot is normally crowded with vis visitors, especially in the summer. Alberts Anchorage, which you mentioned, is just on the other side of um, this like little point cliff thing and there's two sailing vessels anchored over there maybe because this anchorage is really rolly it was last night and today um maybe that's why they're anchored over there because they have they've been here a lot but i was glad i'm happy uh my friend neil fletcher who i'll be sailing with this summer if all goes right in sweden he lent me this thing called a flopper stopper which you you swing your boom out, put a preventer on you drop this flopper stopper in the end and it dampens your roll and i'm sure that made my my sleeping conditions much better and it says uh, then he goes on to to explain the approach and everything and uh, right now I'm anchored in 25 feet of water I have like four scope out because I'm alone out here and you know I can do that the uh, oh and I'll, I'll say my anchor setup I have a 35 pound Delta I have 80 feet of uh, 3B or BBB uh, chain 3 8 inch and um, I have 600 feet of rope road. So, and that may seem like oh, crazy overkill. Cal Catalina Island, which I'll, I sail to quite a bit, is um, really deep anchorages. Like they had put, they pushed all the good anchorages way out past the mooring field. So everything is choked up at the mooring field. So, so if you want to anchor out there, it could be 60 feet of water, um, 70 feet. And I want to be able to do seven scope in any anchorage I go to. So. That's why I have so much. This anchorage, <clears throat> I woke up this morning to the most incredible sun sunrise. The glow of the city is blocked by the uh, the mountains to my east. Uh, so last night, the stars were amazing. I mean, I truly felt like I was in the middle of nowhere. To have an anchorage to myself, and I'm sure it's, it's only because it's winter, but... To be completely alone, this close to one of the biggest cities in the world, there's something to be said for that. And you can only reach this island by a ferry if you don't have a boat uh, that doesn't run that regular. And the, you know they they sometimes they they don't run at all if there's there's bad wind or or something. Yeah, it's really isolated out here. It's a national park. Um, this island specifically is controlled by the Nature Conservancy, and you have to apply for a permit online. You can do that. It's like thirty dollars for thirty days. Um, you just put in the date you plan on being there, and then they give you thirty days from that date. So I got have that handy. I um, did all of my chart plotting on my laptop in OpenCPN to do all the distances and everything. And uh, 
kind of figure out where I want to go. And then I'm using iNavX on an iPhone um, along with a digital yacht wireless AIS receiver called IAIS. So that was handy on the passage over because uh, there's a lot of shipping traffic. So I kept that on and I could see all the all the ships in the shipping lane and which way they're going and and how fast they're going and stuff so that was that was useful yeah uh so this is uh like he said sandy bottom here 25 feet i'm anchored just on the other side of some kelp bed uh to um help prevent some of the swell as well and um i didn't even bother going ashore at this anchorage because there's signs everywhere that says you know do not enter no trespassing there's a big portion in the middle of this island that um, you're not allowed to hike on because they're restoring it and the nature conservancy doesn't allow this one whole section to be explored which is more than fine last night after I got in and uh, I was sitting out on the deck and a bald eagle flew over and landed on a perch like looked down in the anchorage and this morning there are seals like feeding in the kelp beds pretty pretty amazing uh, spot and uh, I've got it all to myself. Um, as I said, this is my first podcast. Hopefully as we go along, I'll be able to um, to get more um, details about the anchorages. And if there's something that, that you would li have liked for me to describe or include, you know, in future uh, a Stern View podcasts, please drop me an email. Let me know because... Uh, um, just just trying to figure it out and put this information out there so that when you guys come out here you'll have like an additional little bit of information of uh what to expect and um and what's good and what's bad for me this anchorage the only thing it's not even bad it's just part of reality is that it's so rolly but that may have to do with the winter there there was no winds yesterday coming in which is nice because i was beating into the swell the whole time if I'd have had winds, you know, worse, that would have made things worse. But I'm going to be pulling up the hook in a couple hours. If there's any wind whatsoever, I'm just going to do some slow sailing down to my next anchorage. Um, as long as I get there before dark, that's my only, my only objective. Here we are. This is James of Sailing Vessel Triteo at Coches Pretos Anchorage, Santa Cruz Island. Channel Islands. Fair winds until next time.